So today I'm gonna to share with you guys my top 10 favorite plugins that I use on every single mix. True Sound Studios is in your ears. Hey guys, welcome back to True Sound Studios. I'm Wiesner. We're sitting here in my brand new studio. And today I just want to share with you my top 10 favorite plugins that I use on every mix. Now, real quick, I have, yes, I have a lot of analog gear. I have an analog mixing console. And though I do a lot of this in the analog world, there's plenty of pieces of the gear that I don't own. And therefore I need some sort of alternative. And that is to use plugins. Also just want to make it very clear, nobody is sponsoring this video. I'm not being told to say any of this or feature any of these plugins. With that being said though, check the info box down below. I listed all these plugins and links to them if you want to check them out. Also, this is only 10 of my favorite plugins. Why don't you guys leave a comment down below and let me know what some of your favorite plugins are. Okay, so to get started is the SoftTube Console One. Now, I only have the 4000E emulation, but just let me make it very clear. This is my favorite plugin to use on drums, percussion, and bass. It is amazing to my ears and, and to, with my workflow, this is the best thing I could ever have for drums. The whole shape section on this plugin is amazing. You can change the attack and sustain of, of a kick drum or snare. The EQ, though it only has four bands, is still very powerful. It has a built-in um, analyzer in it, and you can really do pretty much anything you need with this EQ. Then we get to the compressor. The compressor is, it's just amazing. Like it makes, it is my drum sound. I love what I can do with the compressor. It even has a wet dry blend. I mean, you can do a parallel compression right on here without doing any extra work. And then finally is the drive section and the drive in the drive character is if, even if I'm not gonna use the rest of the plugin on whatever, I will always, always, always put that drive on every single track. It is just, it just works so well with almost any type of, of track that I put it on. Then there's so much else you can do with this, but this is just my favorite, favorite plugin for drums. I just think it is absolutely amazing. Couldn't say enough good things about it. So number two is the Waves Vocal Rider. Now, when I am mixing vocals, I use a lot of compressors. I might use three, four, five, six compressors on in you know from the individual tracks to the vocal bus. You know, these are all doing small, maybe two, three dB of reduction at a time, sometimes less, sometimes more. But what is really powerful is at the very, very beginning of my vocal chain, I put the Waves Vocal Rider. Now, obviously you could go in and just manually automate the vocal volume throughout the entire song, through all multiple tracks. But what's nice about the vocal writer is it does it for you. And you can actually write the automation onto the track if you wanna go back and do it later, or correct it or change it. I mean, the this saves me so much time. It's super powerful. I've gotten to know it so well that it is one of these plugins that I just it's, first of all, it's on every single vocal. It's on every single song I ever mix. But it's also so powerful that I think if I wouldn't have it, I would spend even more time mixing vocals. Number three is the Slate Virtual Mix Rack. Now, I've had this since Slate has started. Um, it's been a while back when you only had like a console emulation, a channel emulation, a couple EQs and a couple compressors. Still use this to this day. In fact, I bought the Slate VMS1 microphone and the microphone preamp. Now even use this even more because now I'm using the mic emulations, the preamp emulations, and I just, I think it is crazy powerful. I love the FG401, uh, the, FGS, like the SSL EQ, and the Revival. I just think that these plugins, even today, are still incredibly powerful. I use them on every mix. I know exactly what they're going to do to a particular track, and therefore, I just use them all the time. Number four being the Waves Kramer Master Tape plugin. I think that this is one of those plugins that you could literally use almost anywhere in your mix. Um, I love it on just individual kick and snare tracks to maybe add some low end or take off some brightness or add some saturation. I'll put it on a drum bus if I'm trying to get 
some of that tape vibe, that tape saturation going on. Or maybe I want to really drive the, uh, the, the tape machine really hard and get some crunch out of it. Uh, you can also use it as a delay function. Like it's literally a delay. It's not time matched to your track, but it's a really great delay. I love putting this plugin on vocals and distorting them or creating some sort of cool effects. Um, sometimes I'll just throw it on the whole master if I'm maybe doing a mastering section and I just need to take off some of those pokey transients. I just... This is my favorite tape machine. Um, I think it is just so versatile and it seems to work on just about everything that I put it on, which is why it's on this list. Number five being the Waves SSL bus compressor. Now, I have the Audioscape SSL bus compressor, the actual analog unit, but since I only have one of them and I tend to use three, four, five of these um, of this bus compressor on a particular project, you know, this can only have one duty. So I use the Waves SSL bus compressor on everything else. Not only is it great on the master bus, which is almost 99% of the time I have it on the master bus, um, I love it on a drum bus. I think you can really sculpt the entire kick, snare, and tom sound with it. Um, I think for parallel compression for drums, this is also another great spot. Or parallel compressing vocals using this plugin. Um, I also really like this bus compressor on snare drum, especially snare drum samples. I don't know what it does, but it adds this crazy fatness to the drums. And because of this, because of its versatility, because of how well I know it on a vast array of different things, this is why it's on the list. Extremely powerful plugin. So number six is the Oix Sound Soothe. Now the way I think of mixing, it's EQ, compression, and effects. But when Soothe came around, it's like EQ, compression, effects, and Soothe. This thing is just amazing. <clears throat> let's, just, uh, let's just take vocals, for example. In the past, I used to have 20, 30 different vocal tracks um, that kind of spanned different parts of the song. So maybe there was a couple for a verse, then there was a couple for ver uh, pre-chorus and then three, four, five of them for a chorus. Because, you know, when you're singing lower, you're there's more mid-lows going on and there's not much brightness. Then the pre-chorus has got some more energy. And now you have a different set of frequencies you're working with and the chorus is big and loud. So now all of a sudden all these bright this brightness comes out and much more mid-range and you lose some of the lows. You know, before I used to have all these tracks to have to deal with because I was constantly changing my EQ points through all the different parts of the song so that the vocals sounded, you know, cohesive and, and still had the body and the not super bright characteristics of it. But then Soothe came along and it's like this adaptive EQ that happens as you can put it on a vocal bus or whatever, and it just makes things easier to mix. I love how you can use it to help cut out some resonance in uh, whatever you're mixing, or you can use it as a de -esser, or it kind of acts like an active EQ. I mean, the thing is just amazing. It's, I mean, it's not a plugin that you're just gonna put on a source and all of a sudden it's just, you know, takes it from dog poop to a shiny thing. <laughs> You know, it doesn't do that, but it helps fix things that, you know, might require two, three plugins to go ahead and fix, and they still don't do as good of a job that Soothe does. So it's just an amazing plugin. Absolute must now, at least in my opinion, for a studio. So number seven is the Mog EQ4. A big majority of what I do here at the studio is mixing. And a lot of the times I'm just getting a pre-mix stereo beat and then somebody sends me all their vocal tracks. So a big focus is around vocals. It's about the clarity of the vocal, the brightness, how much body it has, how thick does it sound. And in the past, I've used a bunch of different plugins to get vocals to to be where I think that they should be and have that particular vibe and character that fits into the track really well. There's never really been like that one plugin for vocals that I thought, yep, that did everything until I got this plugin. For example, 
The 650 hertz is a great frequency if the vocal sounds a little thin to go ahead and crank that up a little bit. And then we get to 2.5K. Now in the past, 2.5K has never been a frequency that I've really focused around vocals. But ever since I got this plug-in and you start playing around with that 2.5K and it really helps vocals cut through the mix, have that nice mid-range to it, but without it being harsh, which is the most important thing. Because you can use any EQ, but sometimes as you start boosting that mid-range, you start to get all these uh, other frequencies around it that just aren't so pleasing. And then have to be, you have to go back and help tailor some of the other things that it boosted. But with this, with that 650, the 2.5K, and the between 8 and 10K, um, that part of the EQ is amazing for adding that brightness to the vocal. Um, not only do I use this EQ for vocals, but I also will use it on in mastering as like a master EQ to add some of that brightness to help bring out a vocal in a, in a, in a mix. Obviously it has fixed points except for that high frequency band, but it is just really amazing and I use it just all the time now, not only just on, on the masters or on the buses or the vocals, but now I'm starting to apply it to drums and guitar and stuff like that. It's just, it's one of my favorites. So number eight is the Baby Audio Parallel Aggressor. Now this is actually definitely a newer plugin for me, though I have like, you know, the plugins that I like to do parallel compression with. When this plugin came out, you know, it was one, it was a curiosity thing. Oh, it's got this spank section and heat, you know, we'll see how it's going to fit in. Initially for me, I thought this would be great for drums. So I tried it out. It's one of those plugins that you just put it on the drum bus and I started playing around with it and it added some punch to the drums and it added some vibe with the saturation and it didn't take me half an hour to figure out the plugin. It was real quick, real intuitive. It was just like you put it on and it just makes it better. So then I was quite intrigued then. Started using it on more and more mixes, even mixes that I was working on that I didn't have the plugin in. I started adding it to that. And the spank section of this is adding this incredible extra like parallel compression to the drums, making them super punchier extending the release and then the fact that you have these three different sliders to adjust these different parameters is amazing. The heat section adding this like tape grittiness saturation of the track. You know when it's soloed eh, you know it doesn't always work but you can blend it in and it's super easy to blend it in. It's not complicated routing. I really love it. In fact I started using it on like verse or pre-chorus drums when I wanted to really drastically change the drum sound I just go ahead and just solo the heat band and you create this really cool drum vibe super quickly and that's what I like about this the most is when you're doing parallel compression in the past for me it was like add this add that blend this together blend that that didn't work try this try that and it would take me a while and sometimes because I know it takes so long I'd be like eh, I don't need a parallel compress this track I'll worry about it somewhere else. But with this plugin, it just made it super easy. It just seems to work all the time and therefore it's on every single mix. So number nine is the Sound Toys Little Alter Boy plugin. And this is like a pitch shifting plugin and you can independently move the pitch in the format. Now, when I first got this, I thought, eh, you know, it'd be something cool to play around with and it's got some like saturation on it. You can do a wet dry blend. And it was cool, like, you know, to, to do like the chopped and screwed thing <laughs> that that we used to do. And I thought it was really cool, but, you know, I probably stopped using it for a while because I just, after that kind of faded away, I didn't really have a use for it. Then I was in a recording session one day and uh, the singer wanted to do some harmonies, but they were really struggling to figure out what the harmony was. So I pulled this plugin back up and um, I was playing around with the pitch and I put it on the main vocal to create its own harmony. And from there, it's really become this plugin that not only do I use to create artificial harmonies, but I will use to pitch shift maybe backup vocals or change the formant to create all sorts of different types of vocal sounds, whether it be backup vocals or doubles or main vocals. And it just has become like this plugin that I use on vocals 
all the time. For example, I'll take a main vocal. So a lot of times I'm getting hip hop vocals or trap vocals. Um, and you know, I'm, I have these beats that I'm mixing it around and the vocal is good, but I don't, maybe only have five different vocal tracks. And for the hook, there's one vocal. So what I'll do is I'll take the main vocal. I will copy it. I will take this little Alter Boy plugin. I'll pitch it up a full octave and blend it into the main vocal. And you create this high vocal. But if you blend it in and EQ it right, it just kind of adds some air to the vocal. It adds some brightness that isn't being done with an EQ. So it creates like a a brightness effect without actually having to boost some of the higher frequencies. So it, it really works out well. It creates a second vocal and I will slightly time delay it, but what it does to the vocal sound is it really helps create it and make it even larger than life sounding. Sometimes I'll spread it real wide and it's like it's there, but it's not. But when you mute it and it goes away, you're like, oh yeah, that definitely sounds amazing. So not only am I using it for that, you know, like I said, I was, I'm using it for to create harmonies all the time. Um, certain types of vocal effects, it's just, it is an amazing plugin. And now because what I do with the mixing is so focused on vocals, this plugin is used on every single session. So last on the list is Breverb. Now this is Cakewalk's own reverb. So my DAW is Cakewalk Sonar Platinum and included was this plugin, Breverb. Now, obviously there's a whole bunch of different types of reverbs out there and most of them are, are pretty good. I mean, now I have my own outboard reverbs. I have a tons of different plugins for reverb, but this plugin is just amazing at creating that like, super lush, massive sounding reverb that, you know, might not be good for like drums or certain things like that, but slower moving leads or backup vocals or when you're trying to create this massive cavernous effect, this is by far my favorite reverb plugin. It's just turned into being one of those reverbs that I actually didn't use for a long time. And then I was looking for a, a different type of sound for a particular project a couple years ago. And I stumbled upon a plugin that I already had, <laughs> which was this Breverb. And I put it on the track. And it was just one of those moments where you go, that works. That is exactly what I wanted. And over the years, it's become more and more part of it. And now it's just, it's part of my template. Breverb is automatically loaded in there and I use it all the time. Maybe it's just on background effects and certain things and in, in certain parts of songs. It's not like it's a core part of the track, but for reverbs, this is by far my favorite. So that's my top 10 plugins. Now, obviously there's many more that I use on every single mix, but I didn't want this video to be too crazy long. But please let me know if you guys want me to get back into reviewing some of these plugins and how I use them. It's interesting because I like to combine the knowledge I have from all the real instruments, the real guitar, the real drums, and the singing vocals with the new modern pop and hip hop stuff that's out there. Either way, let me know what plugins are your favorite, what plugins I maybe should check out because I would really like to break out of um, you know some of the things that I'm using right now because there are so many manufacturers out there creating all these amazing plugins. So if you guys like this video, click that like button. Don't forget to go find True Sound Studios on Instagram. I post there every single day and it's a really great way to uh, communicate if you guys want some information on how to build a studio or whatever questions you have. So thanks again for watching this video and I will see you guys next time. So thank you for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, click that like button and consider subscribing for more content. So not only do I make YouTube videos, but I also produce tracks and I can mix and master your music. So once again, thank you for watching this video. I'm Wiesna and True Sound Studios is in your ears.